I believe when I fall in love with you, it'll be forever. I believe when I fall in love, it's time, it'll be forever. What's up, you guys? Poet WP. A little Stevie Wonder for you. There in the opening. I can't really sing like Stevie Wonder. I have much too deep of a voice. However... It's the thought that counts. Uh, <laughs> today's um, today's kind of an unscripted video. Well, I have a few loose notes, but I've just been, you know, thinking a lot lately about love and the whole Cupid's arrow striking and everything. Uh, I've been delving into astrology a lot more lately. Just as a dis distraction, probably, really, more than anything. And the whole Venus in retrograde and Taurus full moon. <laughs> it's, uh... A lot of big, 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 huge, giant energies happening this year. Like in every way. In everybody's life. It's like... The Ascension. This is what it's been spoken of as. The fearful fundamentalist Christians refer... Think of it as a rapture. But it's not going to be any fucking rapture. Not like they think of it as anyway. It's all going to be in the mind. It's not going to be... It's not going to be the Battle of Megiddo or some bullshit. Uh... I think I'm going to title this video Why is everybody so goddamn afraid to fall in love? <laughs> uh, there were three times really in my life that I was just kind of starstruck with a woman Well, I mean, to some degree, you're always starstruck when you like somebody. But there are certain times when... Uh, something happened to me recently that reminded me of the first time I ever caught the love bug. <laughs> Back uh, in the eighth grade. The first time I ever wrote a woman a love letter. Well, she wasn't a woman. We were teenagers. <laughs> Or eighth grade. And I went deep. I went real deep with it. Uh, I was listening to like oh, that Led Zeppelin song. I forget the name of it now. Oh, 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 oh. You don't have to go. Oh, 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 oh. Baby, please don't go. You know, I would listen to that on repeat, and I'd listen to, like, Sm Smashing Pumpkins, Melancholy, and the Infinite Sadness, like, all, a lot. Uh, you know, it was that era of 98, 97. So, I, uh, my young heart was, well, actually, no, it was before that. Shit, I can't remember. I have a hard time with time. Whenever the fuck Melancholy dropped, was that 94. Fuck, I don't remember. Anyway, I'm, I, I'm not good at remembering shit, and that's the way I like it. So, yeah, and I was all caught up with this one girl who knew Shakespeare perfectly. That's why I really was infatuated with her. We took uh, English class. She was raised by a couple of bohemian-type parents, I guess. Real intellectual-type girl. Her name was Johanna. <laughs> she knew Shakespeare like the back of her hand and I just loved her insights and she just she just captured my heart see that's the thing about true love you're not attracted to them until you listen to them talk and then once their personality comes out then it strikes real hard <laughs> Well, that's the first time I experienced that. I was, what, 13 or 14 or something? 
It was rough. I sent her a love letter. And she rejected me, of course. She wanted the fucking football player who was trying to bang as many broads as he could as a status symbol. Like all the other women wanted. Uh, and that football player uh, broke her heart, actually. Um, but I was crumbs, evidently. I was not... Uh, you know, what the fuck did we know? We were children, kids, you know, teenagers. Um, you know, and so, like, that was my first taste of heartache. And, uh, and it's happened like that before. I fell in love with a woman's personality th two or three times. When you fall in love with a personality, they become the most beautiful thing in the world. Uh, I mean, really, that's the secret. That's why everyone's afraid. That's why everybody ends up with people that... Uh, they don't really dig their personalities so much. They just... They dig the patterns of behavior they've fallen into because it's comfortable to them. It's like they're uh, sitting in a pile of shit and the shit is warm and squishy but and they're kind of afraid to get up out of it because it's embarrassing and it stinks and it is warm and squishy and comfortable in some ways so but eventually you gotta get up out of your pile of shit clean your ass and fucking get your head out of it. <laughs> and follow your heart. Right? I mean, uh, how long do you want to spend your life ice skating uphill trying to fight your own uh, spiritual needs? So, uh, <laughs> it reminded me of uh, the first time because I had that experience again recently. Out of the blue. Just out of nowhere. When I wasn't thinking about it. Nothing. It just pfft, hit me like a fucking bolt of lightning. Uh, and being the guy that I am. I jumped right on it. Like catnip. Uh, you know... A lot of times, I felt like, you know, I was just a little too Henry Rollins and not enough Justin Timberlake, you know what I'm saying? Uh, you ever go... Henry Rollins has a spoken word piece that's got, like, millions of hits called I Know You, you know? I can really identify with a lot of that kind of... The things in that piece that... Being the pariah, the outcast... The one that's dying to fit in, but just everything feels wrong to them. Uh, reminds me of a Tom Waits, Tom Waits lyric. In the land, in the land of the blind, the one-eyed man is king. That's ninth and unopened. All the donuts have names that sound like prostitutes. And the moon's teeth marks. <laughs> the clock ticks out like a dripping faucet. Till you're full of blue water. Shit, I can't remember all the lyrics. I gotta listen to Rain Dogs again. Rain Dogs is my favorite album ever. Tom Waits' Rain Dogs. Best album ever. Um, so yeah, I uh, I had a dream recently. <laughs> this is not another prophetic dream. This is a personal dream. Personal prophetic dream. It doesn't apply to the world or anything. Um.
See, when I was coming up in high school, I had this other misfit friend, right? And we were thick as thieves. We were like brothers. Uh, we had a lot of really cool times together. A lot of, we, uh, we really lived it up and, uh, explored our youth to the fullest. Um, we made a good team for a long time. And we met up with these other two girls early on uh, who were from across the tracks, literally. <laughs> and uh, they also were a pair of best friends. And then we we teamed up, right? He took one, one as the girlfriend, one girlfriend, and I took the other girl as my girlfriend. And we were two pairs of best friends. <clears throat> that was an interesting time in my life. Two couples, all friends. Um, eventually, though, I had another, you know, at the same time, shortly after I met my best friend that was a guy, I met another friend that was a girl. It was my other like, these are people I had past life connections with. That's what it was. I know it for a fact. Now, I discovered it all right here on this meditation mat. Um, and because my brain chemistry is given to that path of illumination. Um, I, I know exactly how, what it was, where it was, how it happened. I have full memory of our past lives together. At least one of them, anyway. And I understand now what the karma is about, why it happened the way it happened. I do understand it now. It took me a long fucking time of meditation, but I've got it, darling. <clears throat> Thank God for that. I thought I'd never get out from under this fucking Rubik's Cube of fucking... Trying to, it's just... I had my two best friends, right? One a man, one a woman. For about a year and a half, I didn't introduce them. Deep down, I knew. I was in love with her. And he was just like me in so many ways. And I was just like him in so many ways. <laughs> and if I introduced him, there was a good chance they'd fall in love. Well, they got together. I don't know. I guess they were in love. I don't fucking know. I eventually introduced him. And I was in love with her. I, uh... It's funny, when I was 17, she was 18, I came to her very forthright, very proper, uh, very honest, direct, looked her right in the eyes. And I said, I feel a deep, deep connection with you, and I want you to be my girlfriend. Um, we'd been hanging out a lot. We were friends. We were very close. Um... And she laughed at me. As though it was like some impossible factor. And that really blew me out of the water. I kind of want to cry right now talking about it, but I'm not going to. Um, because to me, I thought it was all perfect. I was certain. It felt perfect it felt absolutely right the timing felt perfect everything felt perfect i was never more sure of anything in my life intuitively it felt predestined it was strong as fuck even at 17 i knew but she just laughed it off like what the fuck have you been smoking you know 
So that was a hard motherfucking pill to swallow. But I continued being friends with her because I loved her. And then she got together with my man, my male best friend. And the rest is history. But I had a dream, and it ruined our relationship. It ruined our friendships. I can't talk to her anymore. I can't talk to him anymore, either. I made my peace with him, though. I ran into him one day when I was downtown at the bar. We made our peace. We sorted it out. And we're good now. But we still can't be friends. Never made my peace with her, though. Not really. So, part of me is kind of expecting her to have to come back around. Fuck. This whole astrology thing I've been looking into recently just as a distraction from the fact that the world is going to hell in a handbasket rapidly. Um... So now I'm kind of fearful of her coming back around. And how I, I mean, I know how I'll handle it. I'll handle it like it should be handled. So. I'll make my peace. I'll make my peace. It's long overdue. It, I don't know. I'm not going to... Maybe it's just in, all in my head. I hope so. I hope, uh, I hope it's just me working it out. I hope she's not actually still thinking about this shit. I really hope she's not still thinking about this shit. I, I sure as fuck hope she's not thinking about it enough to want to come back around to try and make amends. But I guess it's possible, and I need to. I need to do that if that's what she needs needs from me. Whew. It's gonna be tough, but it'll get done. It'll it'll be done. God will take it. Um, life's funny, you know. Just when you don't give a fuck anymore, they make you start giving a fuck. You gotta lose it all to gain everything, all that bullshit. And other cliches. Yeah. Anyway, the dream. This is going to be a long fucking video. Uh, in this dream, and you see, when I was coming up, my absolutely, absolute favorite movies, one I would watch religiously. Shit, hold on. I gotta get a drink of water. Is, uh, Ferris Bueller's Day Off. Yeah, I used to, I mean, who doesn't love Ferris Bueller's Day Off? If you if you don't love Ferris Bueller's Day Off, then are you even fucking human? What's wrong with you? <laughs> it's jokes, people. Some people, it's interesting, the comments I get sometimes. Anyway, um, <coughs> Bueller, Bueller. <laughs> I love that part where, uh, was it Stein that, what the fuck is his first name? The guy with the monotone voice who does Bueller. When he's talking about the Laffer curve and the trickle down economics and all that shit. It's funny because like he's like supports all that shit. But in the movie he's talking about it. And it's never fucking worked. Ever. Trickle down economics means the rich are pissing on you. Anyway. The dream. We used to watch first, me and my friend. And this is a staple. Bueller. It's fucking John Hughes is brilliant. John Hughes is, was an angel director. He was, you know, and every every great person a lot of times has some fucked up crazy flaws. I, I don't know if John Hughes did or not. I don't fucking know. I don't know the man personally. It's amazing how many fucking heroes you found out. Oh my god, what the fuck, you know? Now, not that that's said to be said by John Hughes. I don't fucking know. 
But the man made some goddamn brilliant movies. Um, one of my favorite scenes in Bueller is when <clears throat> they have the instrumental version of the Smiths. Please, 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 let me, let me get what I want. Lord knows it would be the first time. Playing and they're in the top of the series. No, they're wandering through the museum and they're, you know, and then the kids are going by and it's all joyful and, and then they're at the top of the Sears Tower and they're leaning their heads against the tower, right? And they're looking down there and they're like, and then uh, Cameron's like, was it Cameron or is it? Yeah, Cameron's like, I wonder if my dad's down there. The son of a bitch is down there somewhere. You know? Well, in the dream, me and my friend, we were like, in the roles of Bueller and um, Cameron, kind of, but we not like it was. It was themed off that scene in the Sears Tower. We were at the top of the Sears Tower, and we were leaning our heads against like Cameron was, and, and Bueller and and the, his gorgeous girlfriend. I forget her name. Anyway, um, <laughs> she was in Time Cop, and then she, I, don't, she, I haven't seen her in years. But anyway, uh, they're all leaning their heads against the thing, you know, looking down. When the stream, me and my friend were were up in the top of the Sears Tower, like in Bueller, and we were both leaning our heads against the thing. And the weird thing was, like, we were a very jovial mood. We were cutting up and laughing and just all smiles and just, it was really cool. Um, and we kept leaning our heads against the, the the window of the Sears Tower and the observatory part or whatever, like in Ferris Bueller's Day Off, and we're looking down. But in the dream, like, we were looking down on all the women we used to know. <laughs> like, oh yeah, you dated her, and you, you know, yeah, I remember when you dated her, and shit, we both dated her at one point. You know, <laughs> shit like that. <clears throat> and then, but like, in the dream, like, we were looking down on them, and this this is not an ego thing. This You could say this, oh, you're looking down on all the women you dated, right, from the high up, you fucking egomaniac i'm aware of that interpretation that it could be but that was not the way it was to me in the dream all right it's not the way it was to me in the dream i'm quite aware of that psychological analysis that could be made okay i've thought about that long and hard as well but that's not what it was about uh we were looking down and we were seeing all the paths of all the women we knew in our youth as sort of a team a duo right uh we were just, we, you know, we double date. We he'd date one, I'd date one different girl from like one girl from one school. He dated a girl from another school. We you know that we, you know, or we like we had that the two girlfriends for a while. You know, the the two pairs of friends. You know, uh, you know, and it was just we were just the single, just playing the single life. You know, just comparing notes and shit. You know. <laughs> And we were kind of doing, that's the way we were back in the day in our youth, you know, and then that's kind of the way we were <clears throat> up in the Sears Tower. We we're looking down, but we were seeing the paths they took in their lives, all the women we knew, you know? And we're like, shit, look what she did. Oh my God, that's so surprising. It's like, oh my God, what the hell is wrong with that one? Jesus, why is she doing this? You know, and stuff like that. And then this one, we were like, look at this silly broad. What is she doing? You know, stuff like that. And we were just totally cutting up, right? Just watching them and just like, but the one. <laughs> The one that we were both so in love with, my other best friend, my, this, the one we had past lives with, both we were both had the same, we, all three of us were in a past life together. And I know exactly what it is. But I'm not going to tell it. Because it's none of your business. But, um, the one that broke everything. Not that she broke everything. I broke everything. He broke everything. She broke everything. Collectively, the trinity of us broke it. I don't fucking know. Everyone's to blame, I guess. But, uh... The one was... trapped in a fucking box. But it was one of her own making. She was in, it wasn't a box, it was like a room. She was in a little room, right? And there was a door right in front of her. 
and it wasn't locked. She was too afraid to even turn the doorknob. So she just stayed in that room while everybody else was finding paths, finding their heart's path, their soul, their spirit path. But she wouldn't come out of the room. Anyway. So I've been thinking a lot about that dream, obviously. As one would. I guess she's waiting for somebody to come in the room and get her. But it doesn't work that way. We all have to walk out of our own room. I don't know. It's interesting. It's interesting, uh, the undertones, the undercurrents of reality and how they fashion psychological traps or gateways based on your choices. Something we as human beings should all be considering a great deal more, I think. Anyway, I guess I'll stop here going on 27 minutes. Thank you for joining me. And I hope you can gain something out of this little impromptu talk. Catch you next time.